My advice to aspiring arrangers and writers is to take your time during the creative process because you never know what's gonna come up. Take your time when you're doing your research. Um, take your time listening to the music that you have to arrange. Take your time learning the voices that you have to arrange for. If you have the time, take it. Take your time understanding how to write the music. Voice leading is both a theory thing and it's also an ear thing. Voice leading basically means write the part that's best suited for the harmonic and melodic structure and context that's already given to you. If you're in C major and you're given, and, and you've written this part already, and you're on the five, and then you're going to go back to one, and your part is already here, G, B, they're already on a B. Well, voice leading and general knowledge would tell you to just take them up to a C, as opposed to from, from B to E. That doesn't really make sense and it's not easy to sing. You don't have to be a virtuoso, you don't have to be Chopin or Mozart, but you do have to understand music and you have to understand how it works. Try not to have a big ego or take yourself too seriously because there's always gonna be someone better than you, which is why you should always be working towards being the best that you can be. Music is a learning process until the very end. Life is a learning process until the very end. I think the best way to become a better arranger and to set yourself apart is to do your research. Listen to it for the specific things that make it such a great song. There are usually many, many different layers to every recording and that one layer that's not heard by everyone on the first listen but is heard by you on the seventh listen can be your new motif for your arrangement of it. So I like to arrange by ear a lot, but having the music theory background and having that foundation helps me get it on the paper and it helps me get around any mistakes. And I think it's very important for everyone to understand at least the basics of music theory. And if that means going and picking up a book or going to your friend to ask them for help on how to learn music theory or taking a class on music theory, I think it's worth it. Now I have the option of writing a four chord song versus a more chordal song with a lot of different jazz chords. The options just continue to grow. When I write arrangements, I set out to, to bring something new to the table. I think it's worth it to, to challenge the listener. As a musician, I love to be challenged. I love to be given pieces that, are, that aren't necessarily in my range. I love to be given pieces that I've never seen before because I love to constantly be working. When I do my uh, acapella covers on Instagram, it's not just so I can put out a video to have and for people to hear me sing, it's to challenge people to think about music in a different way. My other advice is, is really just don't give up. If you really do have the passion for this and you really are great at it, there's absolutely no reason why someone's negative comment should sway you the other way. You owe it to yourself and you owe it to everyone else who believes in you not to give up. If you decide to let go of music for whatever reason, then that's your decision, but not because you gave up. Never let that be a reason for you to stop doing what you were made to do. My advice for singers is to be the best that you can be. Continue learning, pick up an instrument. You don't have to know how to play all of them. Then you've got that. Understand music theory so that when people tell you to stay on the five, you don't go down to the three because you're already on the five and you know what that is, so you stay on the five. Little things that set you apart from the rest are going to allow for people to take you more seriously and it'll allow for you to take yourself seriously. As a musician, you do owe that to yourself. Oh, well.